Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of GG Gaming. To start off the new year, even though it's about halfway into January, I'm going to introduce Player 2, but first, I am Player 1. As always, Andrew, because <laughs> I'm not changing my name. And Player 2, <laughs> hopefully for permanent, nobody knows, <laughs> is Joey as Player 2. Hi! <laughs> Now, some of you might recognize her from some things on the internets. Yeah, some stuff. You want to introduce yourself at all? I go by the handle of Joey Cat on pretty much everything, so you guys can decipher where I am from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I guess we could get right into it. Um, what you been playing, Joey? I have been, what, well, literally just finished the first Bioshock about a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Because I played Bioshock Infinite first, and then I played Bioshock 2, and I thought it was about time I played the first one, since that's how you're supposed to play games, uh, in wait, order. you played the later ones first? I bought the, I bought Infinite first, and I really liked it, and then I bought 1 and 2, but I was told two was the best, so I played that first. <laughs> and then I got down to one. Are they related at all? Do you, like, you don't um, need to play the first one first? Yeah, I mean, the first two are set in sort of the same area, mm -hmm. except the second one, you're a big daddy. That's You play as a big daddy, who is one of the villains in the first game. Mm. Okay. In the first one, you play a, a normal guy. They're all kind of different, honestly. Especially the third one. Different how so? Story-wise or? So, um, story-wise, <laughs> yes. Definitely story-wise. They really don't connect all that much. Especially in Infinite because you're in kind of like a sky world. Everything's up high, floating. Mm -hmm. While in the first two games, you're underwater. Like an underwater utopia. Now, does it take place in like modern day Earth or? No, I'm pretty sure it takes place in the future. It's never really said as much. Hmm. Unless I didn't pay attention, but Yeah. I don't see I don't know much about it. I'm not really into first person shooters, but um I make some except I make exceptions here and there for it's, games it's that it's definitely worth playing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Story wise it's amazing. Voice acting is on point. And the weapons are awesome. Uh, I know that they, the guy uses like, he injects himself with powers or something. In the first two games, he injects him. If you can choose to kill a little sister, which has this kind of like, if you kill them and take their blood or whatever, you can like ingest that into yourself and you get these powers. But if hmm. you don't kill them, you get a good ending. If you do, you get a really bad ending. So oh, best okay. not to a kill them. Good ending if you don't kill the bad guys? Yeah, you want to spare them. Oh. It's not their fault they're that way. Oh, interesting. Yes. Obviously no spoilers, but... Um, no spoilers. I haven't I even spilled anything. I have no idea. How many Bioshock games are there? There's just three. Three? Yeah, the third one came out in 2011 or 12, I There's think. There's no, like, side games that are canon? Oh, oh, there is one side game. I haven't played it yet. It's, uh, what is it? It's a side game for Bioshock Infinite. Uh, it's, Infinite. I cannot remember. But it actually, from what I hear, it takes place in the underwater sea utopia that the first two games took place. So that's kind of interesting. Why is there a utopia under the sea? Is that a spoiler? Um. To explain it? <laughs> it's really complicated to explain, actually. <laughs> oh. Alrighty. <laughs> um. I can't remember what the game is called, but it's a DLC, and it comes with the Bioshock Shock Infinite, so. Where Infinite, with the, the DLC takes place under the water? Yeah. The so DLC uses the same two main characters from Bioshock Infinite, and they kind of, they play themselves, but in an alternate reality, almost. Oh, so it's not canon? I don't know if it is or not. 
because then it kind of, t- I can't say it without spoiling, but it kind of ties yeah. in the story because it's kind of alternate reality. Interesting. I don't say, I don't really know anything about Bioshock outside it's of amazing. what a big daddy looks like and uh, a little sister looks like. And yeah, I don't think that's enough to know what Bioshock is. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome though. I'll have to take your word for it. Um, <laughs> have you played anything else? Uh, old school stuff. Um, well, actually, the... you have. You see, um, so typically, typically we talk about you know what we've played in the last week. But for you, since it's your first time, you could talk about anything you've played recently. Anything? Well, with the since the NES came out in the so first like couple the... of months. I mean, the, the yeah, past the great. past couple or a few months. Yeah, the brand new one. I kind of wanted to get back into my roots, and I dug out my old NES games, and I was playing the original uh, Super Mario Bros., the first one. Wait, from Actually, the NES Classic thing that they released? No, 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 no. Um, because they released that, I was like, I'm not going to pay that money. I'm just <laughs> going to get mine out. So I, I played on my original one from, I think it was my parents, and they gave it to me, and it's from 1991 that's when they got theirs what did you play mario i played yeah the, we have a super mario pack and it comes with all the games uh, well, all stars mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. oh i played wait i thought all stars was a super nintendo game i don't know it came with the nes like the square one right huh. um I don't know. I I I'm, I kind of want to look this up now. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? Mario All Stars NES. It comes with Super Mario Bros. One, two, three All Stars, and then like a special little Yoshi game, like Yoshi Story game. Uh, Mario games on NES. Let's try that. I don't. I only see. I see Super Mario All Stars for um, for Super Nintendo. Hmm. If anybody's actually listening to this and knows, they're probably angry that, <laughs> that I have no idea. You guys can be angry because, truth be told, after a while they all start to become the same to me. I can't play Mario like the old Mario games. I get. I get so frustrated. I- because I grew up... Okay. My, and my platformer I grew up on was Sonic. Oh. See, I've never played a Sonic game in my life. Oh, my God. I know. I even have a Sonic game, but I choose not to play it. Oh, which one? It's for the GameCube. It's, like, Sonic Adventures. Um, apparently it hasn't aged well, but it's pretty good. Like, it's, I don't know, I've never really been huge on Sonic. I think it's cool, and I'm all four people playing it, but it's not my cup of tea. All four people? Who are the four people? I'm all four people. No, I'm all four people playing oh, it. Oh, okay. At least it's something about all four people playing it. I'm like, yeah, all who those are these four, four people? people? <laughs> those only four people who play it. Only four people play Sonic, and I am one of yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where, did you play any other NES games? Um, they're okay. So there's a Final Fantasy game. Just the it's, first one? I don't even know if it's the first one, honestly. It's so old, I'm terrible at it. But when I was looking through the collection, I was like, oh my gosh. I I didn't know Final Fantasy was Nintendo. And I was like, wait, it's not Nintendo? It's not Maybe Nintendo, but it was on the Nintendo. Before yeah, so, they before they switch to PlayStation, it's terrible graphics, <laughs> terrible they're, everything. They're eight bit or whatever, right? I know, but it's like you see it a certain way for so long, and then to kind of downplay and go to that is just kind of like it's crazy. <laughs> but then we also have the original Star Fox, which. I never played. I love. <gasps> Star Fox is amazing. I won't, the only Star Fox I've played is Star Fox 64. I never played it on the 64. I have. Really? 
Yeah. I really I, like that game. After we got our GameCube, which unfortunately is no longer working and it's so sad. Um, no we got with us. Star Fox Assault and that's like the best game ever. <laughs> the best Star Fox game or the best game? Oh my ever? gosh. Yes. The best Star Fox game, hands down. I didn't out like Out of the ones you've played. Oh, okay, yeah, out of the ones I've played. Okay, so what are all the Star Fox games you played? I've played the original Star Fox. It didn't have, like, any other name. I played Star Fox Adventures, which is, like, I, I would say the first one in the, the GameCube games. Then you have Star Fox Assault, which, hands down, is the best. Then uh, we got Star Fox Command, but I don't like playing games on the DS very much. Really? I prefer playing handheld. It's hard. It's too small of a screen. I don't know. I prefer playing handheld because I can play it wherever I want. Mm -mm. I Maybe. Just, I don't have to sit in front of the TV. Like, like I don't have to sit in front yeah. of the TV. So like, I and can then, play in my bed yeah. or on the couch. Yeah, I can't, I can't do that. I don't know why. I get, like, especially, I used to have a Harvest Moon game for my Nintendo, not my Game Boy Advance. And, it, like, I couldn't play it even in the car or walking around. I had to be sitting still. I got motion sickness. Um, really? Well, well, then don't play it in the car. <laughs> well, yeah, I would, I could only sit down and do it. Harvest Moon, by the way, is one of the best games, but... I never played it, but I recently started Animal Crossing. I never played Animal Crossing. Yeah, neither have I until now, and, like, I don't know what to think of it. Uh, like, part of me is bored with it, and the other part of me is, like, intrigued enough to not be bored. <laughs> I'm like, so, like, I'm trying to understand. I'm like, so the premise is that I just shake trees and collect things and pay you off try to get a girlfriend debt. or boyfriend depending on who your character is i don't know if you could do that in a in yeah. this animal crossing or in any of them really i think you're the only human so it'd be kind of weird and i'm going off of what i remember my friend playing this is years ago are you sure they were playing animal crossing yeah because they were super addicted and i said stop let's go outside and get fresh air <laughs> um, <laughs> I played like a lot of games in the past month, maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what I talked about last time. Um, I think the last, it, the last, the last recording, I, I spoke about how I beat the Last Guardian in like two days. Whoa! <laughs> and um, I think after that, I played Shantae. And uh, Shantae, half genie hero. Have you... Isn't is, she's got purple hair? Yes. Yes. Okay, I've seen that because Christina V would post things on her YouTube channel of that. Yes, yeah, because she voices Shantae. Oh, that's probably why. And you've never, you've nev never, you've never heard of, never yeah, it. you've never even heard of it. I've heard. I well, obviously you've heard, heard of it. it if but... you've, you followed her Facebook, but I just don't or, know of like I don't know much about it to be like, oh yeah, it's that character. <laughs> okay, well, Shantae is a half genie, half mm -hmm. human, I suppose. <laughs> and um, there's this town. It's not. It doesn't take place in like our in our world. It takes place in some fantasy Earth, and yeah, uh, it's um. She there's this island called oh it's called Sequin Land if that's how it's pronounced Sequin or Sequin and um, in the very first game on the Game Boy I think it was just or Game Boy Color I think it was just called I think it was just called Shantae and um, you know the premise of the game is very um, it's very s simple story you know you're you're a half genie hero. Um, the your the guardian or guardian for hire of uh, okay. of the island or of the town um I, I don't i can't remember if she was 
like I don't I can't remember how her story starts if she's already I think she's already there genie mm-hmm. for hire because I think the idea is that um I don't know if it's a running gag or it's just like the idea is that towns uh islands and towns hire genie heroes <laughs> um yeah but um there's a pirate uh named Risky Boots and she's the main villain and uh she I think she she like I don't remember exactly what she did in Game Boy Color but she got a hold of some kind of steam uh steam machine <laughs> and um I don't know you beat her it's a very simple story and then the second one was the second one was um crap Shantae and no, Pirate's Curse was the third one. Shantae, have ugh, why can't I remember the name of it? Oh my god, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry at myself. <laughs> okay, I'm so I'm very angry that I can't remember the name of the second <laughs> Shantae game. Sh- uh, I'm I'm looking this up right now. Shantae, um, why do you need to know my? <sighs> Google autocorrects it to Shantar, which I guess is a, sh- a city somewhere. Who would have thunk? <sighs> Who would have thunk it? Uh, let's see here. Shantae, I'm looking on Wikipedia. Risky's Revenge. That was that was the sequel. The sequel was Risky's Revenge. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was it was on the DSi. It was a digital DSiWare. Um, and Risky's Revenge... Um, I think, from what I remember, was a somewhat simple story as well, but towards the end of the game, which, like, I don't want to spoil it, but at the same time, the next game starts off following it, so I guess I I won't spoil how it happens or what mm-hmm. leads to it, but the end result that the third game picks up from is that she has lost all her powers. So, okay. the pirate's curse, um, she actually, instead of using her powers to um, dance and transform into animals, um, she uses pirate gear, and uh, she actually winds up teaming up with Risky Boots, because then they, they have a common enemy who becomes the main villain. Um, and then, it, it, that's the, yeah, that's the third one. And then the fourth one... See, I'm a little bit iffy on this because they make a big deal out of her losing her powers, and then it's like, I feel like, well, she's still, like, she can still use magic in the fourth game, so it's like, she didn't get her powers back, but she has her powers again? Like, I was a little yeah. confused on that myself. Um, but the fourth one is Half Genie Hero, which is the newest one that just came out, and that one has... Uh, Risky Boots being the main villain again, and um, it's just like the best platformer I've played in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the graphics are beautiful. Um, there's a lot of unique, uh, unique aspects to it. Like one of the animals you transform into, which I didn't even like. I wouldn't have even thought of this, but like um, some of the platforms have markings in them, like. Um, you think they're just designs like mm-hmm. uh like i'm trying to explain like since it's a platform it's a side view and um there are these roman greek roman slash greek slash etc <laughs> um yeah ty- uh, type ty- uh, type of platforms that have these designs on the sides of them that are apparently one of the transformations you get is you can turn into a mouse and you can actually go into those and you like traverse those line designs that are like almost like mazes, but they're not really yeah. like, they're not really like mazes. They're just they're very simple. And, and I was just like, wow, I would have never thought to 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 make something out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, there's some really unique ideas in there uh, as a platformer and. Uh, my only, my only, the only upsetting thing was that I beat it so fast. Like, it's a pretty short game. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just because it's short or because I just played the heck out of it. Yeah. 
So, but that was a really fun series, and I'm hoping it continues. Um, cool. What else did I play? Uh, I've well, I started Final Fantasy 15, and I think I'm at the end of it. Nice. Um, without spoiling anything, um, of course, but uh, I, I, I think I'm at the end, and um, I gotta say, I'm a little bit disappointed from. Uh, from what I've been hearing, I thought it was going to be something else. Um, the battle system is not like I thought it was going to be. And the open world, I feel like a lot of open world games suffer from this, but the open world kind of actually takes away from the gameplay sometimes. Like, oh, I got to uh. traverse all the way over here. I mean, not that it's empty, but sometimes it just, the traversing yeah. from place to place feels empty because what you're doing in between like point a to point b is not anything that it's it's not what you you want to do so you're like well mm -hmm. there's all this beautiful stuff that i don't care about because it's not worth my time at the moment i, yeah. I guess unless you want to do side quests and stuff but i don't really have time to do that so um mm. i i i I only like that. I only recently really started getting into it, and by recently I mean like at the end of the game, <laughs> like some major stuff happens about midway, and I f I think the story. I maybe it's just me, but there I had a lot of trouble with following the story up until like where I am now. I actually had to read a couple of Wikipedia articles just to figure out what happened up until where I was, which disappointed wow. me. <laughs> There's yeah. like all these terms, like names of like places that are thrown around. And I'm always like, well, where am I now? Well, where am I going? Why am I going there? <laughs> and, yeah. and who's this? Who's that? And like all these names, all these people. And then like somebody else shows up that I'm like, well, who is this person? It's like, oh, <laughs> they, they're the, they're the marshal. And it's like, well, who the hell's the marshal? And like, why is why is he here? Like, what's his purpose? And I guess because you're, I guess because you're a prince, so there's a lot of important people. But I'm like, I don't. It's not, I don't know. I had a hard time caring about a lot of the characters. By the end of the game, mm -hmm. I feel like I've connected with the four char like the the main, the four main characters more. Yeah. But there was a, a I feel like there was a very rough start for me story wise, and, and I know I'm. It sounds like I'm being harsh on it and i'm just trying to be as critical as i can but i i do like i am enjoying the game it's just i thought it was going to be something else you know the battle system yeah. to me it doesn't fit what i want out of the battle system i suppose is one way of putting it like it, it's seen to really make it cut and dry to make it sound very simple it's kind of like hold circle and occasionally block with square i know mm -hmm. there's more to it but um that's a very simple cut and dry way of explaining the battle system and um if if you're in the middle of an attack and then on the screen it says to block because an enemy's in a uh, attack uh you hit block but you're already in the middle of an attack so it's like so so then you can't block and you get hit so there's this mix of do I attack or do do I block and I feel like as an as something that leans closer to an RPG that it's not something that is very um like fits very well battle mm -hmm. system wise if that makes sense but um the story yeah I found the story very confusing apparently there I, I didn't even realize this until like the end of the game <laughs> that there's like three country like three big major i guess they're countries the the story from the the story going into the game that you know i guess it, it's either explained in the beginning or there's like some backstory you can read into before you start the game um i think it's in the tutorial there's some um, there's some pictures on these walls that you can walk up to and uh they give you some insight into the world. And so basically, going into the game, what you're supposed to know is that there was... Um, uh, 
there was uh, an oracle, I, I suppose, or, or some kind of being. I'm trying to recall. Okay, so there was some person in, in the past. Um, they got some kind of power. I know people are going to be pissed that I'm, like, butchering this. <laughs> but <laughs> this, like, so, somebody got, like, some power, and they, I guess, were, like, oh... I'm a powerful person. I don't know. They were a good guy. And uh, their power went into some kind of crystal. And then there's a ring. See how much I don't understand the story. <laughs> they, there's Basically, there's a crystal. And th there's a crystal that, like, wards away darkness and demons. And then there's a ring that the person who wears it can use the crystal. And yeah. then there's there was some kind of goddess or oracle. I think an oracle. And uh, in these times of darkness, the someone was given powers from the Oracle to, um, I don't know, do Oracle <laughs> things. <laughs> and um, apparently there are six gods along with the Oracle, and they uh, are gods. I guess. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. See how much I don't understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then apparently there are demons who come out at night. And uh, um, apparently the nights are getting longer. And the demons are getting more. -er. <laughs> and yeah. uh, you've got to... Okay, so that that's that's the backstory, but like that's the that's the ancient lore backstory. But the immediate modern backstory is that um, there are three major countries. Um, one of them is Lunasia or something like that. <laughs> uh, there, there's that. I forget the names, <laughs> but there's there's three of them. Uh, two of them are at war with each other, and the other one's like the neutral party. Um, uh, and the Empire is your evil one who's trying to take over the other one. And so the only reason they – like they, they're very the, – the, the Empire has a lot of military uh, technology, machinery. Uh, so they're very powerful, and the only reason they haven't been able to successfully take over this other kingdom is because they – they have the crystal and the ring and using its power, they're able to hold up some kind of wall around the city to like ward off demons and enemy, any threats. Mm -hmm. So they make some, um, the empire is based in where the current descendant of the Oracle is. And, um, she's not allied with them at all, but I guess she, she kind of lives there or whatever. So, they come up with some kind of treaty where the prince from the kingdom is going to marry the current oracle. And so the two set out to the neutral country to marry each other. And so that's where the game starts out. Um, and the chaos kind of ensues from there. Um, oh my. Yeah, like... I, I would say what that chaos is, because it's in the very beginning, but it's not, like, in the opening. It's, like, a little bit into it, and I don't want to spoil, like, the first kind of, like, major happenings. Yeah. So, it, it's uh, it's cool when you know what's going on. <laughs> Maybe I'm just stupid that, because I, like I didn't it. understand it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> w uh, so I got the... I got the, del uh, not the deluxe edition, the special edition, or I think that's called the deluxe, the something edition that's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's two special editions, and the second one being the super duper expensive one that comes like figure and everything. I did not get that one, <laughs> but I got like the normal special edition um, that also comes with a movie that I think, and I didn't watch it yet, Um but I'll watch it after I beat the game. And the, I think the movie takes place during the game. That's like covers events that were happening elsewhere. And okay. I think I know what it covers. And I don't want to say it because, again, it'll kind of spoil it. 
but I think it covers the ensuing chaos that happens in the towards the beginning of the game that I was referring to. Um, uh. And I don't know that for sure, but I, I'm kind of guessing that based on the very limited trailers and stuff that I saw of it. So that's not based on fact, that's based on speculation. And mm -hmm. um, uh, apparently, I didn't even know this, I got the game, I got the game for Christmas, but um, I had gotten the game, uh, which I got, I I had went, I, ha I had pre-ordered it for myself, and then I told my parents, I'm like, you know what, because I, I didn't really want anything for Christmas, I was like, you want to get me something, yeah, you get this that I pre-ordered. And so mm -hmm. I went with uh, with them and they picked it up and uh, I had the receipt. Now, I don't know if it was on the receipt or not, but apparently there's a code uh, or for pre-ordering at GameStop where I pre-ordered it. There's a code for a downloadable 2D sprite platformer slash beat -em up esque game that acts as a prequel. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I want that. And uh, I, I deserve it because I... I pre-ordered at GameStop, and I don't have the receipt anymore. <laughs> and uh, oh, no. and so I looked it up, and apparently it's the the only way to play the game is to have gotten it from GameStop as DLC. And oh. a lot of people didn't get their codes because, like, some people were saying that GameStop employees were hoard hoarding it to, like, sell and stuff. Now, I don't know if that's the truth or not, but... That's just what I read, and yeah, because um, you know everything on the internet is the truth, <laughs> and um, so I, I took a look on eBay, and people are selling DLC codes from starting at seventy bucks. I've seen them go like over a hundred bucks for a code for a digital title. I'm like, they they have to release this at some point as a standalone game, like digital. You can't, they. I mean, I I guess they they could do whatever they want, but I mean, is it really worth it to not release yeah. it for everybody to pay. I mean you have the finished product just you'll you'll won't you profit by having by releasing it to everyone you know mm -hmm. it's not even everyone who pre-ordered it it's everyone who pre-ordered it at specific retailers so the only yeah. way to play this game the only way to get the code to download this game is having had pre-ordered the game at specific retailers apparently some of which didn't even hand out codes. I don't even know if th there was a code on my receipt because uh, usually know. usually I check that stuff. So, you know, I looked mm -hmm. at the receipt. I don't remember if there was a code on it or not, but I'm assuming that if I threw it out, there was no code on it because I usually check that. So I'm like, uh, you know what? <laughs> what, do, what do I, you know, how am I going to ever play this now? Yeah. So that's annoying. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but um. Would be. So yeah, um, that's basically what I've been up to. I, I <laughs> towards the end of Final Fantasy fifteen, I started Animal Crossing New Leaf. Uh, I played Shantae. There's probably a couple other things in there. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I now that we've spoke about what we've kind of been up to. Um, I do want to talk about what's to come, and that is, preferably today I wanted to focus on the Nintendo Switch, because I really didn't get a chance to talk about this in previous episodes too much, and, uh, what do you think? <laughs> I honestly don't care much for it. Really? Um, yeah, I mean... Maybe it's just me, like, I really don't get hyped up for new game systems, but this one really doesn't seem necessary at really? all. I really? I'm, like, feeling the hype for it. I am so indifferent. Like, I watched, I watched it, I watched the controllers and how they worked them out. I, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't care for it. I could live without it. What you is can it have that it in you my don't, house and I still what, wouldn't play it. <laughs> what is it that you don't care about? I don't know. I just... But the thing is, like, when they were explaining, like, all the new features and they were talking about what you could do with it and how, like, the controls kind of, like, you can hold them in each hand and then kind of set them back together and then, like, you know, put the screen in the middle. I don't know. I was just like, oh, 
Well, I don't really okay. care about that. I care more about the simplicity of you can play this on the TV or you can play it on the go. That. Well, like, that. they had the same feature when they did the Wii U. Yeah, but it wasn't which, to the point what? where you can take it anywhere. Like, you had to be well, yeah. within the vicinity yeah, I get of the that. TV. I guess that, but I don't know. Like, that uh, idea... That idea was as simple as, oh, your parents want to watch the TV you're, you're hogging the games on? Well, you could continue playing it on the tap, like the, the Wii pad, uh, the Wii yeah. pad. But um, this goes as far as, like, oh, you just take it anywhere. It ha- it's, runs on batteries and, ha- you know, plays the game. Yeah, but then I feel like, so you have to buy a whole new game system when, like, People who have the DS or Game Boy Advance or PS, whatever that's called. (laughs) Well, apparently it's not supposed to replace the DS, but they said the N. They said the. I almost said NX. They said the Switch wasn't going to replace the Wii U, and that's exactly what it seems to be doing. Yeah. So it's just. I don't know. I don't know if I would really... Like, I was more excited for the PS4 than I was for this, and the PS4 is literally the exact same as the PS3. Well, I'm excited at the fact that Nintendo seems to finally be doing something unique in the useful department. And, uh, and, and like, they, they actually have... I don't know if you heard about what they call HD maybe rumbling i forget hd something but they they had specific touch sensitivity where they were explaining that based on the rumbling of the controller alone you can tell like like if if the controller you were holding was a glass and somebody dropped an ice cube in said glass like based on the vibrations of the controller you'd be able to tell like how many ice cubes are in, in that controller, which mm-hmm. I thought was like, that's something I've never even thought about to be so specific in the rumble feature of a controller to tell specific, I guess, motions or f- mm-hmm. vibrations. Like I've never thought about like ice in a, in a glass, but at the same time, I wonder how useful really is that feature? Mm-hmm. Like that's cool, but what's the use of it? Yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel right now. Kind of just well, do it all they can to compete. Like, I love Nintendo, but I feel like they are desperately trying to keep up with the PS4 yeah, and but, the Xbox. Yeah, but now they could finally play, like, games that were, well... Actually, I don't know how powerful it is. I'm thinking maybe they can play PS4 and Xbox One-esque or size games, mm-hmm. which I'm, I don't know if they can. I'm not saying they, they can. I'm saying I'm wondering if this mean, like this new system is powerful enough to play those types of games because that means that third-party games that come out on both systems may now be able to come out on the Switch and therefore... Mm-hmm be competitive in the market like a a lot of people usually say do i want to get a nintendo system or do i want to get a sony or 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 microsoft system and it's never like which of these three should i get it's like do i go nintendo or do i go everything else now if the switch can now play play this the games that previously could only be handled with the ps4 and or I should just say the Sony and, or you know, just the PlayStation Xbox systems, um, can can the Switch compete in the sense that it can now, can it now play, the you know the same size games? I, I think you yeah. know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I do. So, so like whatever new game comes out on, like let's I don't know for sure if Final Fa- if the new Final Fantasy VII is exclusive to PlayStation Four. Or not? Is it also on the Xbox One? I, I don't know. But let's say, let's just say, for the sake of example, that seems like it's going to be a, a massive game, and uh, 
it, let's just say, again, for the sake of example, it's coming out on both the PS4 and the Xbox One. Will the Switch be um, powerful enough to also have it on the system and therefore compete with them? Like a fan of a fan of a company who puts their games on on the PlayStation and Xbox consoles, can they now afford to choose the uh, the new Nintendo system as a potential replacement? Because hmm. maybe that could play those games and more, like Nintendo exclusives plus the games they've been wanting to play, you know? That's yeah. what I'm curious about. And, and, and that is what might put the Switch... Um, that, that that's what might make the switch a more competitive system. In fact, if that's the case, I wonder if it could potentially be the better system, because there's a lot of really good Nintendo games that, obviously, if they could be played on the PS4 or the, the Xbox, people would play them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if that was the case, like let's say you didn't have a PS. I mean, I don't know what, what you. I'm assuming you have a PS4. Yeah. Um, but let's say you didn't have a PS4, and the Switch came uh, came out, and it is basically as powerful as the PS4 and Xbox One. Would you be more interested in getting a Switch? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Really? really? Even if you can like play Bioshock on the go, with the same. No, because I no because. I don't like playing video games. Like, I can't do video games outside of the house. Like, I can't... I don't like playing, like, handheld games. I don't like doing the Wii U. I don't like doing it outside of my home. And it's not because I think it's weird or anything. It's just... I just... I can't... I need to be sitting down in an area, you know? (laughs) Okay, well, let let me put it this way, then. Would you would you consider getting a Switch if it had great Nintendo games that you wanted and can play the games that the PS4 and Xbox One played? I, I mean, would get a Switch if it was super cheap, <laughs> and I would wait probably three years after it came out to when it went down to the lowest of prices. Three years. Because <laughs> sometimes Nintendo is very stingy, and they will wait. They will wait you out. Well, it's going to be $300. Yep. I've got better things to spend <laughs> money on. Yeah, I guess. But <laughs> the good thing about $300, Mark, is that the the hardware will be crappy. Mm-hmm. Like, there ob- obviously there's going to be some good stuff in there. You know? Yeah. Battery life depends on the depending on the game will be they said will be anywhere between two and a half to six and a half hours, which is you know that's a pretty decent time. Um, if you took your game on the go, I was afraid it was going to be like anywhere between a half hour and an hour because like <laughs> let's say you want to play the new Zelda game which looks massive on on the go, I was afraid that you know, like oh that's not going to last more than an hour, but apparently it's going to last at least two and a half hours. Which is exciting to mm. hear. Yeah. Um, I would probably play it on my TV anyway, but I would um, I would consider playing it like in my bed or something, you know, like mm-hmm. like oh get getting ready to go to sleep. Uh, let me play some Zelda before I go to sleep, and not have to kind of be up and awake, but more so relaxing in bed. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you play games, but sometimes that's how I play them. Again, I can't relax when I play games. I'm usually standing on, on my feet or super close to the TV. Standing on your feet? I get super intense with it because I, I don't like to lose. But so I can't, I can't just sit back and play. I have to like get focused. Even if it's single player? Yeah, I can't. I don't know what it is. Like, I think the only game where I can relax is Luigi's Mansion, but even then, if there's a hard ghost, I am on my feet, putting my whole body into it. (laughs) Well, I never played Luigi's Mansion, but it seemed really cool. I always wanted to. (laughs) Um, well, are you at least into Nintendo games? 
Yeah, of course. Um, like, what games do you like on Nintendo? Like, with a specific play, like a console? Well, no, like, what series, like, what games do you like, do you enjoy playing on Nintendo consoles? Slash any Mario general? game. I really, really like the Mario? Mario. I mean, I like, um, I like the Just Dance games. <laughs> I've never played those. <laughs> Really? Oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Um, yeah, usually just Mario games. Huh. I'm yeah, pretty. I... I'm a simple human. What about Zelda? Nope. Pokemon. I don't like Zelda. Um, the only Pokemon game I've ever played is Pokemon Stadium. What? And Pokemon <laughs> Snap. Okay, I mean. They're not, and neither of them work anymore. They're not mainstream Pokemon games, but I guess yeah. they're okay. I am a very simple human, and I don't like to really <laughs> branch out. I guess <laughs> maybe you should. <laughs> uh, and I have played some James Bond games. Some. Like yeah, a- I have one on. Uh, the 64, I can't remember the name of it. It's kind of fun until you die, which is pretty easy. Just, I think it's just 007, right? Is it? Or Gold, I... Goldeneye? Yes, yeah, that's it. And then yeah. the one for the GameCube, which is... Oh my god, what is it called? I play it literally all the time. <laughs> oh my god. It'll come to me, but... <laughs> Yeah, I only played played two James Bond games, but they're fun. Two James Bond games. I didn't even it, know there was more than one. I, am, I think there's more than one. There's probably a whole bunch. Maybe. <laughs> um. Okay, so then what what games do you like to play, if you don't like to play those games? Like, for what? Just in, in, on Nintendo? in general, like, what are your... What are your go-to games or games that you look forward to? Well, I'm definitely PC Master Race, so <laughs> I play. <laughs> I like to go old school, and I'll play Age of Empires or the Outlast games, Amnesia. I did Five Nights at Freddy's, and then it got boring. It got boring. <laughs> I mean, I know they have a whole bunch of sequels, but it just got way too over the top. I usually, well, I just watch, I just watch Markiplier play them. <laughs> he is a god. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> I think he is. He's amazing. He's, he's funny. Like, sometimes if I'm not sure about a certain horror game, I will watch him play it just to make sure it's Well, that's good. a good idea. You just made him sound omnipotent is all and i was like mm. i mean with that voice yeah <laughs> well yeah okay he does have a really nice voice like i could listen to him talk for hours his voice is so majestic <laughs> it is pretty nice voice like if god has a voice that's what it's gonna sound like that or morgan freeman <laughs> wow <laughs> somebody tell him that <laughs> um okay so because you were telling me that well and you just said just now that you liked horror games and you were saying that you really liked resident evil 6 yeah okay so i'm not a big resident evil fan like i like them and all i really enjoyed six and i don't know why but i really had a lot of fun playing it and i played it like several times you don't know why you enjoyed it or you I don't, don't okay so the first two i i liked not so much to where i'd play them again anytime soon but like mm-hmm. it was a good playthrough after that i kind of wasn't as interested and then six came along and it was really good and i don't know it hooked me which ones did you play just one two and six i played them all oh really okay just I hate five. I I don't like five. You hate five? That's my favorite. 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you don't have to be sorry. That's your opinion. I but... don't. It just wasn't my cup of tea. In fact, I didn't even finish it. Really? Yeah. Did you play them in, in like, release order or chronological order? or, or No. Just... No, oh, okay. definitely not. That I could... think the first, the first game I played was four. I think I did four first. And then I did five, and then I went back and started. Oh, see, that's. I think that first. would play a role. See, I played four first, mm -hmm. and then I went back and played all the ones up till then in in order, and then I yeah. played five. And I think one of, and that the reason I probably enjoyed five more then is probably for the reason that um, five kind of concludes. It's like the climax of and concludes the whole arc, I should say, of, of like, Chris and Wesker. Uh, and, and I guess Jill. So basically it kind of concludes what they're building up with, with Umbrella and Wesker. And mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, if you either don't know that or don't care about that uh, before <laughs> going into it, then I can see how five is not something you would really care about which i'm actually curious now um a lot of people who didn't like five i'm curious if they've played the other games before that like outside of just four like did they go yeah from, did they if, did they only play four and then only play five and be like uh four was better and so this is therefore shit or did mm -hmm. they play all of them up till that point because story wise i mean Okay, gameplay wise, I think five was the best. Like, I think it, I think it had the best gameplay for Resident Evil. Like, the play style. Uh, I <laughs> liked the over the shoulder, um, yet co continuing to keep the um, oh, tank controls. Like, like you know, you hit back in action to like quick turn. Um, yeah. The, the the whole weapon swapping system, like everything about that just felt like perfect to me, at least. Um, I felt like that had the best controls for a Resident Evil game. And um, 6 improved on it in some aspects, but also took away in other aspects. And I think part of that had to do with go uh, taking the tank controls out. And kind of just like, oh, if you hold back, he turns around and walks in that direction, as opposed to just stepping back. It kind of messed, like the whole changing that kind of messed with the the system that was around the tank controls, and they kind of had to not necessarily reinvent it, but like they had to make some changes because mm -hmm. they because they changed the controls in that sense, and therefore. They kind of ditched what they had and kept certain things that didn't work. So, but the things they did improve upon, like my favorite thing in 6 that they improved on control-wise, had to be the counters. Like, I, yeah. I love countering, like, melee attacks. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, since you didn't know about any of that stuff going into it, then... I can see why you didn't really care. <laughs> I mean, yeah. did you like the gameplay or? I mean, I really, <laughs> this is weird. I don't really like Resident Evil gameplay what's so much. Like, it, mm, it's okay. okay. So it either has to have like a really good story or good characters. I don't like Chris. Oh, uh, see, I love Chris. I like Jake. <laughs> I'm a sucker for Jake. He's cool. I know he's really not a big part of the series, but uh, well, he is. Kind of is, kind of is, but he. You they kind of made him into a big part of the series, I guess. Yeah. But, um. Uh, pfft, what was your favorite scenario? I'm guessing the, the Jake and, um, Sherry. I like Sherry, but I like the whole... I like Ida's whole story. Did you just call her Ida? Sorry, Ida. <laughs> Ida. 
Ida. <laughs> Ida Wang. That's okay. That's what I used to call her. Okay. And then I got corrected, and I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't. Whatever. I like her. Yeah. I remember a a, car- a a person I follow on YouTube did a fan dub with her, and sounded exactly like her. Really. It was That's amazing. Cool. I'm like. Oh yeah, you do I, some fan dubs too, right? Oh yeah, I some yeah sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, the only one that I've seen you do recently was the uh, Miraculous Ladybug ones. I actually haven't done those in a long time. Really? Then I haven't. Then I haven't <laughs> seen any newer ones. If you've, done I mean, I don't that. hate it. I don't hate it. I just I kind of needed a break. Have you done any ones after that? Yeah. Okay, and I haven't seen any of your newer ones. <laughs> I kind of just... I I guess I just saw, like, Miraculous Ladybug-related stuff, and I was like, oh, I know that person who did the, the voice. <laughs> yeah. So. I was really big on it. Like, super big on it. Well, you don't like it anymore? I do. I just... The fandom kind of got a little creepy. Well, fandoms always get crazy. <laughs> yeah, but kind of like the obnoxious crazy. Oh, like, okay. Kind of where if you don't know as much as they do, you're invalid. And so I was like, okay. Really? Mm-hmm. Does it happened it... with Steven Universe, too. See, I did, have never watched Steven Universe. It's really good, actually. I, I hear it's ending, so I'm considering just waiting for it to end and I just hope watch it the whole thing. End. I think It'll it was end already if confirmed. Don't watch. What? It'll end if people don't watch. I guess it was somehow leaked, and if like they lose viewership, then yeah, it'll get canceled. No, I think the, it's actually getting canceled though. And same with Adventure Time. <sighs> You heard about Adventure Time getting canceled? I don't care about Adventure Time. It's a, it's uh, a... Okay. But I think it was Adventure Time and Steven Universe and maybe like one or two other shows on Cartoon Network are getting canceled. That sucks. I mean, this has nothing to do with video games, but it's okay. <laughs> they should have video games for these. They should have... I don't know if they have any, but they should have good ones. I don't want any that are going to be bad. Hmm. Like, uh, they got some good, in my opinion, the Naruto games are great. And I by games, I, just... I played one game and it was Ninja Storm. Yeah, I love Storm. the Ultimate Ninja Storm games. Yeah. Like, this is the storyline for, like, Haku and Zabuza. That's an old one. Yeah. That's, like, the yeah, first one. <laughs> See, I love those games, but I don't. See, my my thing with fighting games is I get into them and then I play people and um, some fighting games, people are just so good at them and I don't have the time or interest in sitting there to really learn it. Like I kind of would like, I, pref- I, pre- I prefer playing fighting games casually and so I never like stand up to anyone unless it's Super Smash Bros or... Ultimate Ninja Storm, uh, mm-hmm. in which case I'm pretty good at them, but the problem with them is when I play those games online, there's a lot of lag, and that annoys me to the point where I don't want to play the, play it online, <laughs> and then um, I just, I, you know, I don't really have anyone else to play them with, and so I stop playing them. Yeah. So, yeah, I really like the Ultimate Ninja Storm games, but I don't want to play it online because of the lag, so therefore, outside of the story, I don't play it, <laughs> which, mm. which sucks, because I want to. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, I don't think there's any, I don't, I, I haven't gotten any fan questions or comments or anything. Have you? <laughs> no. Well, this is your first episode. So. <laughs> um, all right, then I guess that's going to pretty much wrap it up for, for this week. Um, I guess uh, any 
links will be in the description because I don't really feel like saying them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I guess, is there anything else you want to say to conclude this week? Uh, don't listen to me for the Nintendo Switch. Get what you want. <laughs> don't let me dissuade you. Now you feel bad. I, I do, because I'm like, there are people who are probably super excited, and I'm just kind of raining all over their parade. So don't let me dissuade you. I'm a very, I'm a vanilla person. I like things a certain way. Yeah. It takes me forever to get into certain you things. Didn't, you didn't say anything bad about it. You just said that it. you pretty much went in a detailed reason why it wasn't for you. You didn't necessarily <laughs> say, this is bad, don't get it. You're like, well, you know, I don't play games on the go, so it's not for me. <laughs> I mean, that's understandable. Yeah. I, 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 those people just want to be bitchy about it. <laughs> oh my god, she doesn't want to play games on the go. I am so offended. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's gonna wrap it up for this week. Again, all the links will be in the description. If it's gonna, if you're listening on SoundCloud, uh, the links will be in the description for everything else and I guess the SoundCloud link will be in there too because I'm just going to copy and paste it and because uh, <laughs> um, I, I put I put them in the descriptions for SoundCloud and for YouTube so I just used uh, originally I was like you know what I should not use the SoundCloud link in the SoundCloud description and not use the YouTube link in the YouTube description and I was like you know what I don't care <laughs> I just copy and paste <laughs> them both so um, nice. the YouTube description will bring you to the playlist for all the episodes of the podcast which I mean it's up to you if you want to go back in time <laughs> and uh, the SoundCloud one I can't remember offhand if it's to the quote unquote album if that's what um, uh, if that's what the playlist version of uh, SoundCloud is, unless they're called playlists, I'm not sure, but um, I don't remember if the link will bring you to the entire sound, my entire SoundCloud account or the playlist for the podcast, and also the ones on SoundCloud are since I don't have a premium super duper mega um, membership that you gotta pay for they're only gonna be the most recent episodes so I think the, the first I mean, the, the latest two so when I upload this one that you're listening to right now, um, the two back is going to be taken down. But again, it'll be on YouTube. So in probably a few weeks from now, this one won't be on SoundCloud, but it'll be on YouTube. So, you know, you can choose wherever you want to listen to it. But um, it should always be available on YouTube. Uh, oh. Then there's the Facebook page and blah, blah, blah. Again, it'll be in the description. I will get links from Joey for anything she wants to, anywhere she wants to promote herself, whether it's Facebook or not Facebook or both. <laughs> and again, it'll be in the description. So, alrighty. I guess that's going to be it. I rambled on for too long. So, <laughs> alright, everybody. As always, good gaming and good night. Good night.